And greetings, friends. Today I want to talk to you about Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 8, that says this. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, so here's Jesus saying something, as he ascended up into heaven. And you read this in Acts, the first chapter, verse 8 through 10. As he ascended up on high, he gave the commission to his disciples. Then it says, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto men. Now, a lot of people t take this to mean that Jesus Christ of Nazareth went down into purgatory or hell, whatever the story might be, and he took all those Old Testament saints and brought them up into heaven. Is that true? Is that what the scripture's telling us? I mean, this is typical of what I've been saying on these Bible misconception programs, typical of people trying to put their ideas into the Bible, trying to read something that is just not there. So what does this really mean? Well, at first you gotta ask a couple of questions. What are these gifts that he gave to men? And what does it mean he led captivity captive? Does that mean heaven? Well, these two, uh, these, this scripture is actually quoting two other scriptures of Psalm the 68th chapter, verse 18, and Judges the fifth chapter, verse 12. So let's go to Psalm, the 68th chapter, verse 18. We'll see the same quote here. And it says this, Thou hast ascended on high, thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also. Now, if people think that this means that these Old Testament saints are going to heaven, well then what are we going to do about that scripture that says the rebellious also? Those who teach that these gifts were given to them when they entered into heaven fall flat when they see the scripture that says that it includes the rebellious also. Uh, I'm sure that the rebellious uh, don't go into heaven with the believers. So what does that mean uh, that he gave gifts unto men? Well, notice the context. It says, wherefore he saith when he ascended up on high and he gave gifts to men. When he ascended up on high, he gave a commission to his disciples. Notice, here are the gifts, verse 11. He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, when you go to Acts, the first chapter, here we see Jesus ascending up into heaven. And he says, uh, verse 8, But ye shall receive the power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses of me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and to Samaria and unto, other, unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received out of their sight. So here he's going up into heaven. He gave them that great commission to go to all of the world. He gave them, he gave the world the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the rebellious of preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and telling them to repent. As Jesus says, repent ye and believe the gospel. That's for the rebellious, but also for the church of God, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. So when he ascended on high, he gave these gifts to men here on earth, uh, good men and rebellious men as well, of apostles, prophets, and so on, the preaching of the gospel, the work of the ministry. So what does it say here? He led captivity captive. When he went up on high, he led captivity captive. What does that mean? Well, this comes from a quote from Judges, the fifth chapter. Let's go there right quickly. Judges, the fifth chapter. And here it's talking about the Israelites being freed from captivity from uh, the king of Canaan, and it says in verse 12, it says, Awake, Deborah, awake, utter a song, arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Abinom. Now, in the Bible in basic English, it says, Capture your enemies, take captive your captors. And, in the bio, and, and then another translation says, Take prisoner those who took you prisoner. So here, as Jesus ascended up into heaven, he took prisoner that which took him prisoner. And what is that that imprisoned Christ? Well, Acts at second chapter, verse 24, we see this. It says, whom God hath raised up, talking about Christ, 
having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. So what held Christ captive for three days? But it couldn't hold them because Jesus was without sin. Jesus was without sin, Hebrews the fourth chapter, verse 15. So death couldn't hold them. The wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. But Jesus didn't have any sin. So death couldn't hold him captive. So what was holding Christ captive? Death and the grave for three days and three nights, but then he was resurrected because he was without sin. And so it was, it held him captive, death and hell, but then Jesus took his captors captive, as it says, as it says in the uh, book of Judges. And notice what it says here in Revelation, the first chapter, verse 18. It says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell, or Hades, and death, death and the grave. He now has the keys of death and the grave. And who had the keys, who had the power of death before uh, Jesus Christ had control of it. Satan the devil, as it says in the book of Hebrews. In Hebrews the second chapter, verse 14, it says this, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil. So here Satan the devil had control over death and the grave, and Jesus took it away from him. As it says, he took prisoners, those that took him prisoner. He led captivity captive. And now Jesus Christ has the power over death and hell, thank God, because Satan the devil would never loose anybody from that prison. But Jesus Christ, now that he has control over death and hell, can loose all mankind from the, the grip of death and hell. And we see that in the resurrections. In the first resurrection, he's going to loose the saints of God, people who are receiving their first chance for salvation now, in this lifetime, and then the second resurrection, when the whole world who didn't know Christ will receive their first chance for salvation. So Christ is going to loose all of us from the power of death. Notice what Vincent's word study says about this passage, about death and hell. It says, it is conceived as a prison house or a walled city. It's a prisoner. It's a prison. And as it says that Take prisoner those who took you prisoner in the newer translations of leading captivity captive. And that's what Christ has done. So if we go back here to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 8, it says, Wherefore he saith, this is Christ, it says, when he ascended up on high, he said something to his disciples. When he ascended up on high and led captivity captive, having the keys of death and hell in his hands, death in Hades, not hell, Hades, in his hands, and destroyed the power of Satan the devil. He gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Talking about his death, burial, burial and resurrected. And he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and prophets and evangelists, pastors and teachers. And what did he tell them in the Great Commission? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel of the kingdom of God to every creature, saying, repent ye and believe the gospel to uh, believers, but also to the rebellious also, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. So he led captivity captive means that he took prisoner those that took him prisoner and now he has the power of death and hell in his grasp it's got nothing to do with leading old testament saints up into heaven and giving them the gifts in heaven it, it just it, it just doesn't say that in these scriptures people are just adding their idea into the bible so to say that this scripture proves that People go to heaven when they die. Good people go to heaven when they die. It's just another Bible misconception.